Hello everybody, it's Mike here at K from Scratch and Unity 2018.3 was just released. Now I'm trying to make it as a general rule to try and do just one video a day, but then this happened and I'm not going to ignore a new Unity release. So <laughs> we're getting a second video today. Sorry about that guys. But today what we're going to do is jump in and take a look at what is new in Unity 2018.3. And this is not really a huge release in terms of magical new features, but the new functionality in Unity 2018.3 will really change the way a lot of developers work with Unity. So without further ado, let's jump right in. I'm gonna showcase the very first biggest feature first, uh, show you a couple of the other mi minor but important changes to Unity, and then we'll jump in and take a look at some of the release notes. So first off, let's look at that big new feature. And here you see it, this is it, yep. So what's new special here? Well, this is the big one. Let's see right here, we have a prefab called Enemy Spider. Now let me just open this guy up and oh my god, we have another prefab. And that is the new magic new feature. Now you can nest prefabs inside of other prefabs. And if you worked with Unity in the past, this limitation was a pain in the butt. So the fact that you can now organize things into prefabs that can now be inside of other prefabs makes life a whole lot easier. You can break your things up into much more logical chunks and organize and create your levels in ways that are much more intuitive. Also makes sharing and collaborating a whole Whole lot easier because basically you could just work as an entire structure, dump the prefab over to someone else, and then they take that entire prefab and they could just dump it into a game level, for example. So, for example, I could create a prefab of a book or a collection of books, and then I could create a bookshelf. And then I could hand that as an entire prefab of bookshelf over to another developer who is working on a room. We could create a room and populate it with one or more of my bookshelves and then save that as a room prefab, which could then in turn be reused again and again. So this new level of organization, this nested prefab things is by far the biggest new feature in Unity 2018.3 and it is going to change a number of lives. I also think it is probably the buggiest feature. I have read a number of reports of it causing issues and this is really changing the core of how Unity works, so I guess that does make some sense. But I know a lot of people have been waiting for this functionality, so congratulations, your day has finally arrived. Now I'm going to switch over to a slightly more virginal install of, uh, this is a simple 2D game setup. I'm going to show you one of my favorite new features. This one doesn't look that impressive, but I really, really wanted this. So I'm glad to see it's happened. If you come into a 2D scene and you go ahead and create a new 2D object, head on down here and you will notice you now have the option for isometric tile maps and isometric tile maps with the Z and the Y axis is swapped. I'll go ahead and create one and you will see it creates and orientates a grid that is isometrically organized uh, and you can actually twist and change the, the way and the format of said grid. And then underneath the grid, you have your tile map organized again in isometric pattern. Now, as someone that grew up on games like Ultima 7, and I am a huge fan of the isometric format, Baldur's Gate, uh, Planescape Torment, those are some of my favorite games of all time. So it, a lot of the throwback games that are using the isometric style appeal to me personally. So that's why this um, new feature or function definitely is high on my list. Um, so there are now isometric tile maps directly supported inside Side of Unity for 2D developers. Another one that is very nice, if you come into Edit and then Project Settings, you will get this window right here, a newly organized, and I don't mean for you to dock, undock, okay. So this is what pops up. I'll actually show you it from the beginning. So Edit, Project Settings, it's now been organized so everything is together in one location and it is a dockable window as we just clumsily saw. So you can now have uh, your settings window open and docked. That one is bound to change a few lives for sure. It's one of those smallest changes, but it is a quality of life change for a lot of people. Now, the next one is uh, uh, way beyond what I'm gonna showcase in this particular video, but there is a new GPU-based particle system in here. I'm just gonna show you, it is in preview format in their new package manager. So I'm gonna show you how to invoke the package manager and install the new GPU-based particle system, uh, but I'm not gonna actually showcase the new GPU particle system because that will require its own video. But if you want to use it, go into Package Manager and you will see this list of packages. This was also improved, by the way, as part of this release, uh, as was the Unity Hub, but let's see. So our package is not here. Well, what you need to do is come over here to Advanced, Show Preview Packages, 
And then the new guy right down here is called Visual Effect Graph. Now this, allow, this new feature is, like I said, GPU accelerated particle systems enables you to make new and more powerful particle of system effects that actually run on the GPU. Now the existing particle system is still there and it is still CPU bound. Sometimes you may want one, sometimes you may want the other, but there is a new and much more powerful particle system coming in Visual Effect Graph. But as you can see, it is currently in preview and I've showed you how to actually enable and download preview based packages. So that is new functionality there as well. Now, before we leave uh, the Unity runtime environment, I wanna show you one last thing. If I come here to window and I go to analysis, you will notice there is nothing here about memory. All right, just keep that in mind. That becomes relevant in just a second. So those are the marquee features here. Again, nothing setting the world on fire. The, the whole um, visual graph is actually pretty impressive. And I said, I may do a video on it on its own because it, it's pretty complicated. But for the most part, it's a pretty standard but incremental improvement on Unity. And you know, with all of the huge features they added in 2018.1, it is nice to see just improvements, stability improvements, quality of life improvements, but there's still a ton in this actual release as we're gonna see in a second. I'm gonna scan, scan through and highlight some of the biggest features from the release announcement. And of course, I will link this down below like I always do. Now, another major area that got an improvement in this particular release was the new train system. And I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail of it because hey, I already did, so yay. Um, we'll get into the details there a little bit. There's been a lot of improvements in Unity 2018.3's terrain treatment. I used the beta version and did a bit of a demonstration video about that, and I will link that down below as well. So I'm gonna mostly gloss over the whole terrain thing once I go through this highlight list. So without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at some of the major improvements. Now, obviously they've got here nested prefabs. We covered that, that one's big. That one is gonna change the way people use Unity. The uh, consolidated and dockable new settings and preferences window, that one again, quality of life, it's gonna make working those values much less annoying than it used to be. Uh, .NET 4.X is now the default runtime and you can actually get up to C Sharp 7.3 three support uh, via the open source Roslyn compiler. So that one's definitely cool. Uh, physics 3.4 was, they upgraded to physics 3.4. Uh, speaking of which 3.4 was just open sourced. I did a video about that as well. And 4.0 will be out any day now, literally maybe even today. Um, so wait for that update as well. And hopefully you'll get nicer, tighter integration now that that is an open source project. But they did bump to the, the current release. Um, we already saw the new isometric tile map support. Definitely nice to see if you are working on isometric games. Uh, huge updates to the terrain system. As you saw, I do have a video about it if you wanna see a little bit more detail. Now, one of the nicest new features here is you can stitch um, cells of tile. So basically you could create um, a train in, in say a, a thousand by thousand size. And you can create like three or four or five grids of them. So you can create your train in chunks, but the new editor can actually seamlessly stitch the edge of two chunks of train, allowing you to not just have to make one giant train. You can actually uh, make it as you need it and it can seamlessly seam those edges between the different cells, which is a pretty awesome new development. There was also a new uh, scriptable GPU um, programming inside of the train. Uh, train plugin makers are going to have a whole a lot more flexibility and perhaps most importantly train now works with hdrp the, the hd rendering pipeline and the lightweight rendering pipeline so if you've been waiting for train to work uh, it got a lot better today. Here's kind of one of those fun facts. It's from my uh, train video. Uh, do you know how many developers were working on train at uh, unity until now? None, <laughs> there were none. Uh, they literally just formed a train team at unity. Uh, so that's why there haven't really been a lot of train developments for like years and hopefully now we are going to see a lot of improvements in train over time because now there are dedicated developers actually working on that subject which is a good thing uh, they've introduced the progressive um, gpu progressive light mapper in preview if you're interested in it they do have more details of what the gpu light mapper is all about um, and how it works with the two rendering pipelines and the results you get from using it. As we mentioned, the visual effects graph, that is the GPU-based particle system I showed you how to enable, uh, it is now in. Again, you can drill down into this and get some more details on how the visual effects graph works, including a picture of it in action. But the essential idea here is you can have, as they say, um, millions of particles all running, a handle millions of particles on the GPU, plus you've got some new functionality, drag and drop node creation, um, real-time response as you're working on and creating your particle systems. So it's actually a lot like Niagara, which was just released in Unreal Engine at the same time. So those two are really duking it out feature for feature these days. 
I also got some new functionality such as, uh, for example, there are particle meshes that can now be flipped just like billboards. Particle lights now support real-time global illumination, the new ring buffer mode, which makes it easier to create persistent effects like footprints and bullet holes that survive past their lifetime expiration, which is pretty cool stuff. Uh, we had some improvements on the mobile front, including dynamic resolution scaling on Vulcan and Metal, better APK generation, thank God. And please, Unreal Engine, if you're watching, your build process sucks for Android, so take a cue here. Um, next up, we've got some developer service improvements, and then that's kind of the 100-foot stuff. But really, that is kind of literally just scratching the surface. When you start drilling down into details, which I'm not going to go into all of the detail, but you'll see in the same document that, again, I will link down below, uh, they go into a lot more detail on these top-level things that we already covered, things like nested prefabs. I'm not going to go through all of that again. But if you do want more detail on any of these particular features, they do go into more detail and have generally videos discussing each new major feature. Also, the project that I demonstrated, uh, this guy right here, is available for download. So if you want to see it in action, they have two... Uh, downloadable versions available for you uh, on their prefab uh, site. We saw consolidated user preferences, blah, 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 cinematics and cinemachine improvements, uh, world building improvements, including World Builder 4 version 4.0 uh, is now distributed as source code, includes a new public API, um, also now supports the nested prefab features. Train has gotten a number of updates, as we've mentioned already, and they're covered in that other video I have linked, plus they have more information here as well. Package Manager got updates. The Hub got updates. I love this one. Visual Studio Code Debugger for Unity extension is now available, so if you are a Visual Studio Code user like myself, you can now debug directly from Visual Studio Code, which is pretty sweet. Physics updated, multi-scene physics, uh, garbage collection control. They're actually making some changes to the garbage collection model. Uh, I covered that in another video, but I don't think that is actually going to make it in here. The new .NET, uh, ba 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 Nothing really throwing, like blowing your mind in this, but you see there is a lot more detail of this entire release. Now, the one that I am stopping to point out here, though, is what I think is a mis mistake. They are saying there is a new memory profiler available. Uh, and if you look at the screenshot they are showing here, they're showing it under window analysis memory profiler. But another thing to keep in mind with this release is this is also a screenshot from Unity 2019.1 alpha. Because if I come back into Unity, I go here, windows, analysis, and as I mentioned earlier, no memory profiler. So I don't think this is actually a feature in this release. I think they've made a mistake there, which is kind of a shame because I would love to see this. Um, but... It's released as a preview, uh, and I, I never saw it in... Actually, let me just take a look one more time. Maybe I did miss it. Windows, Package Manager, Memory, or Profiler. Yeah, I got no idea where that is. So um, it doesn't seem to be there, or it's an external thing that you need to add. Uh, but they have no details on actually adding it, so maybe you'll have to drill down a little bit more to get that, but that does seem to be missing. But this release has an absolute ton of small quality of life improvements, as I'm scrolling through and mostly ignoring at this point in time. Um, if you do want to drill down and get a little bit more of those specifics, of course, I will toss this link down below. But obviously, the big ones far and away in this particular release are the nested prefabs. Um, Actually, that is the big release for sure. Uh, but the other stuff we showcased as well. There's some really nice things in here and some things that are going to make day-to-day -day Unity developer definitely nicer for the average developer. And this kind of stuff is nice to see. You do need to have those incremental improvements every once in a while. You can't always just add massive amounts of new features always in constant preview. You need to have things like come out of preview and actually become usable features. And this, you know, this one, we've got prefab and all of the tools that are broken by the nested prefab have been updated as well. Major training updates, which are pretty nice to see, isometric maps, consolidated settings into a dockable window, uh, the new visual effect graph for GPU-based particle systems. There's a lot to like in this particular release, and I'm going to end it there. That is Unity 2018.3, some pretty nice stuff. Uh, again, not setting the world on fire, but it's definitely making Unity 2018 a better product on the whole. And I gotta say, I love this competition between um, Unity and Unreal Engine. They are pushing each other forward at staggering rates, and we, the developers, are benefiting and gaining from every single change. So I would love to hear from you. Are you Unity the developer? And if so, what feature in this are you stoked about? Have you been waiting for nested prefabs like a lot of people? Uh, are you happy to see that we're actually dealing with a pretty modern version of C-sharp? 
start for a change? Are you all down with GPU-based particle systems? Let me know what your actual favorite is in the comments down below. And did I miss a major feature that you think I should have highlighted? If so, please, again, do let uh, everyone else know in the comments down below as well. All right, that's it for now. Unity 2018.3, what'd you think? You gonna get a rabbit? Let me know. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.